In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Stealth Cam WXV or WXA, depending on if you have Verizon or Apple. Either way, it's Stealth Cam's cellular trail camera. Two services, one trail camera. I was planning on doing this review around two weeks, but we ended up getting 80 plus degree temperatures. It was a full moon. The activity in the field just wasn't as active as you'd hope. I didn't feel like I should put out a review on a camera where I haven't got a ton of images. There hasn't been a ton of battery use and so on. Therefore, I waited an extra week and it actually kind of paid off because we did get quite a few images in this last week. The weather's starting to cool off. The moon obviously wasn't full. So we've been getting a lot more activity. So far, I like the camera. To me, it's one of the most reliable cameras that I own. I'm also going to be doing a comparison video. So for anybody that didn't see the other videos, I, I own a Spy Point, I own a Cuddyback, and then I have the Stealth Cam. I basically did an overview of the Stealth Cam and the Cuddyback. I've, I've owned the Spy Point for over a year now and I did a review on that. There's a couple things I'm going to go over in this review and let you guys know about. There's going to be more things I touch on when I compare the Cuddyback to the Stealth Cam and the Spy Point. I'm not trying to leave it so you have questions or whatnot, but if you do have questions, feel free to ask, but also, you know, check out that comparison video because in the comparison video, I plan on giving a little bit more information. I have this camera hooked up to the HME solar battery pack, so I, I can't give you an honest answer about how long the batteries last. I'm going to tell you this, no matter what, if it's a cellular trail camera, they're not going to last. I had a stealth cam in the UP. I left it there for five months. I got to the UP at our deer camp and the camera was still working and it had over like 3,000 pictures on it. It's not necessarily the camera that is doing all the... It's not... not... Darn it. <laughs> oh. It's not necessarily the camera that is sucking all the juice you know, out of the batteries, it's it's more the cellular service. So depending on how often you have the images being sent to you, is really gonna determine how long your batteries last. But, like I said, I had the HME solar panel battery pack hooked up to it the entire time. I have had this camera set to instant. So it's taking three photos and then sending me every three photos. If you have a camera in photo mode, it's gonna send a smaller resolution photo to your phone, to the app, then it's going to save the larger picture to the SD card. Now, if you have it set up for video and you have the cellular service on, it's going to send you a very low resolution. I think it's like 240 or 160. It's a very, very low resolution video. And it's gonna get sent to your phone, but you're not gonna have a second video on your SD card that's gonna be the higher HD resolution. Now, there may be something in here and I just haven't found it yet, but you can, Turn off the cellular modem with the app, but if you need to turn it back on, you cannot turn it back on unless you're out physically at the camera and you turn the cellular settings back on. I'm gonna click this right now. It has a thing called transmit files, and I'm wondering if I turn it off, if I will be able to turn it back on later today, where it'll transmit all the images to me at the end of the day. So it doesn't give me any warning saying that the camera needs to be, this needs to be reset with the camera. So I'm gonna try that and then I can get back to you probably by the time that this video is up. So you do have upload resolutions. You got 1280 by 720p, 640 by 360, and 480 by 270. Upload frequency to instantly, hourly, twice per day, once per day. And then you can turn this daily test photo on or off. Just I keep it on just to make sure that the camera's working. So if I don't get an image for a day or so, I still don't get a test image, then I know my camera's not working. Now I don't use the Google Drive, so I don't really know anything about that. I'm sure Stealth Cam has some information about that. I just like using the app. I don't really feel like getting on my computer and doing anything on my computer. The one thing I notice is I'll get notifications that says you have images. But if I'm at this upload page and where you can see the deer here, it won't load those images. I have to go back to this front page here, this front page of the remote, and then it will load the images from there. The feature I like the most on this app is it actually shows what times most of the pictures are being taken. Basically from 3 a.m. to almost looks like 10 o'clock a.m. most of the pictures are being taken. So I need to make sure I'm out there in the stand, you know, 5.30, 6 o'clock, whatever. I, I really need to be out there as early as possible. And it changes every day. As you see, I'm going through the days here. From when I set it up, I ended up moving it. I wanted to view more of where deer were coming by my stand. Now I can create galleries. I can do, I can delete existing galleries. I don't get into all that. If you know somebody else wants to do that, that's fine. I'm not even gonna talk about that right now because it's just not something that I worry about. 
as far as the camera setup, you know, you have the 12 hour, 24, you can do it 24 hours a day. My photo resolution is set to 22 megapixels. So a 20 megapixel picture would be 5,000 by 4,000. Things I don't like. I don't like that we can't check it on our computer. I, you can't see the images on the computer. You can only see them in the app. If I wanted to show them to somebody else or I had a grandparent that doesn't really use smartphones or whatever, you know, you have that uncle that doesn't use smartphones or whatever, they like to get on a computer still and check the images. You don't have a way of doing that. So basically I would have to save the images, email them to my uncle or whatever. As far as the camera goes, and the picture resolution that are sent to your phone, the picture resolution is, is really good. So I'm gonna go onto my computer real quick and I'm gonna show you guys some of these images. You can't see me because I'm around the corner, but I was actually out in the field. I was sitting in my truck and I was about to get out and I seen this buck walk out of the fence row and I just sat in my truck and waited for him to leave. So this deer is about 50 yards away, I'd say. And at 50 yards away, you can still see the detail of the antlers. And then if you look there, there's like a little stick. I'll, put an arrow here on the screen there's a little stick right there that is actually where the cuttyback is and that is 200 yards away so you can see enough detail there to see a 4x4 post in the ground holding my cuttyback camera and then right here this is the image that I think my grapple came out and that's what actually spooked him because he's looking at the barn and my truck is actually over here behind this yellowish green tree he scared the sandhill cranes away now this buck here is actually from a video last year where I said the name this weird buck and I actually never chose a name I just I'm horrible at that stuff this buck is actually very very tall he's a very weird looking buck but he's very tall and I think he's gonna be on my list for this year I haven't decided yet because he's a young buck his body's a lot smaller than the other bucks that he hangs around with but I don't know if his antlers are like that because maybe he got hit by a car or if he just has weird genetics and then here's a close-up of a doe and you can see a lot of detail in her face you can see a lot of wrinkles I mean, you can see a lot of detail in the soybeans, and then here's another picture of a buck. As you look, those other bucks are pretty far away. They're probably a good 50 yards away, and you can still see the detail in their antlers. As you see there, those two bucks in the background, they picked up their head. You can see the image pretty well. You know, I mean, you can see the detail in their antlers. You can tell that they're bigger bucks, especially that one there in the front. And then even the second one, he's got his head down. I believe that's that same buck that I was just talking about that has that awkward rack shape. Yeah, that's him right there. He just picked his head up. So, uh, basically answer my own little question just more pictures and then you can see it all the way across the field on that deer right there you can see his rack and he's probably 150 yards away the detail in this camera is, is really good and then just more pictures of the deer coming in and there's that tall buck right there that i was talking about it's just a weird looking buck and then there's another buck that's made my list this year so this buck right here in the front is a really nice buck eight point buck so here's the night images. This camera actually didn't get a lot of night images, surprisingly, because on the where the location was, I just thought it would for sure. But I think in the night, they're just out in the middle of the field. They're not walking the edges because they can see so much better than their predators, at least human predators. So I have a set to take three images. And this buck seems to be trotting. And then you see him there, he slows down, and he's still in the image right there, and now other buck's right behind him. And then there's those two bucks again. So you can see that that buck there has a lot smaller body and that's got to be at least a three-year-old buck so I think he got hit by a car and he just his body stopped growing and his antlers started growing weird so I'm in the camera settings right now and I'm trying to see if I can change how fast that burst is taken but it doesn't look like I have an option there now it does have reduced blur so I got an advanced mode right here they run through I don't know what they're running from when those deer are running they're not too blurry but you get some pretty decent detail but I mean you look at that fawn in the back it's not only is it running it's jumping so there's a lot of movement going on but it's still pretty good I mean it's still pretty decent considering those deer are probably really moving so just the deer picking up its head it's not gonna have very much blur at all in the images when you have the DVR mode turned on your card fills up when you take a new picture it's gonna write that file over the oldest file on your card if you don't want that to happen you just rather just go out and change your card you can just turn that DVR mode off. And then the other option too is you can always format your card. The other thing I wanted to point out too is this takes a 64 gigabyte card. I don't know if it'll take bigger than that, but it takes at least a 64 gigabyte card. So right now I have a 64 gigabyte card in it. It has, man, it's gotta have at least 500 images in it right now and it's only like three or 4%. I really like the camera. I think it's very reliable. I've had it sitting out there for the three weeks now and I haven't had to go out and touch it one time. The pictures that are sent to your phone are really good. If I have it set to video mode, it's only gonna do a very, very small video. So it's like literally like 240p video. And it's so it's, 
It's not very good quality. I like shooting videos a lot better because a lot of times a deer will come into the frame, they'll take that picture, and then there could be a buck following it. You never see that buck come in. So I like doing video because usually, you know, it's, it's a time frame of at least 30 seconds to a minute. So I would love to see the option to where it would send me a picture to my phone, but then it would also record that higher resolution video that I'm hoping to see of, of the deer that are around my camera. What I do like about it, it is very reliable. It hooks right to that 12 volt battery pack and it works very well. The image quality I think is really good. It's usually pretty instant. I walked out there and set up my blind the other day and like within like one minute I had a notification on my phone saying there's been a picture taken. The one thing I noticed too is the signal, when it, if you look at the app here, it shows that the signal only has one bar. The camera's Verizon. And so when I'm out of my grandparents and I have a Verizon phone and the other two cameras use Verizon. All of these devices have five bars of signal. For some reason, this camera only has one bar of signal, which is kind of disappointing because with it being so reliable, I was kind of hoping to take this to our deer camp and then leave it at deer camp. But if it's not gonna have the signal, I don't think I'm gonna do that. If there's any more questions, you know, try to ask me you know, before I put the comparison video up. I'm actually gonna put the comparison up in two days, so we don't have much time. Or just leave a comment and ask me and I'll just you know, answer, answer your question. I think it's a good camera. I think it's worth the buy. If you guys have any more questions, please let me know. I'll try to get to them in the comparison video. That's gonna be up in two days. Thanks for watching. Comment down below. Hit that like button. Subscribe. I gotta go.